Now that you understand how to use and navigate by using the VOR, the VOR indicators, and the nav radios, we're going to talk about another form of navigation called ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. It looks like this in your avionics stack if you have one, and it pairs with the needle that simply points at a station. The station on the ground is called NDB, Non-Directional Beacon. So how this instrument works is on your sectional chart or low in route if you're flying instruments, you'll see a little red dot with um, some dots around that. And that's what the symbol for the NDB looks like. And then there will be an information box paired with it. So in our example, we have um, Diana. And the frequency is 338. And then the identifier, if I were to put it in a GPS, could be GY. And it has the Morse code, which is similar to how we were identifying the VORs. So how this works is you would go to your frequency box, 338, and we'll dial in those numbers until it reads up here. And then we'll come up here to where it says ADF, press that on our audio panel, and then turn the volume up. This allows us to identify the Morse code to be sure that the station is working. So now we're going to take the poster down and I'll draw out how you actually interpret these needles. Let's say that we have an NDB station here and we want to fly past the station. So my airplane is here, we move forward, we move forward, we move forward. So what does this look like on the instrumentation? So on my indicator, the arrow just simply points at the station. So in this situation, the, the needle is going to point off my front left, like this. Okay. As I pass by the station a little bit, then my needle is going to turn ever so slightly, and then again turn when it's, the station's pretty much right off my wing. And then as I pass by the station, you can see it starts to point behind me. There is a dial here on my indicator, but I don't actually have to tune like I did for the VOR. When we're talking about a VOR, the VORs have 360 degree radials as we discussed earlier. So we have 360 distinct radials coming off of the VOR. And then we can choose one. For example, let's say we chose the 120 and I wanted to fly away from the station on that particular radial or maybe I want to fly to the station. But in the situation with the NDB, there's no particular radial. We actually call them bearings. You can choose a bearing to the station or you can choose a bearing from the station. But it basically just sends out a signal that the arrow points to. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to fly directly to the station. How does that work? Well, there's something called homing and there's something called tracking. So let's say that I was south of the station and I wanted to fly inbound on the 360. So this direction, you're flying 360 degrees to the station and then this bearing would be the 180 degree bearing from the station. And here's your airplane. So in this scenario, your heading indicator would be 360 and your magnetic indicator would just simply point straight ahead of you. And then you could track all the way to the station. Well, that works if there's no wind, but let's say that we put some wind in here. So if there was a wind fairly strong out of the west-northwest, as you fly directly to the station, if you keep the needle completely off your nose, what happens is your path goes like this. It kind of makes a little arc in order for you to get to the station. Now will you get to the station? Yes, you'll definitely get to the station, but it would take more time as well as more fuel burn. And we call this homing. Now if we want to track to the station, then what we do is as the needle originally was pointing straight off our nose, it's going to start to turn a little bit because in this position here, the station is now off your front left. It's no longer straight off your nose because the wind is blowing your aircraft. So in order to correct what we typically do, it's just a kind of a technique. If we wanted a 360, but we see that it's on a 350, 
we're 10 degrees from where we want to be. So how to correct for this is we take, we double the error in the direction of the needle. So that's 10 degrees, so 20 degrees. I would want to fly a 340. And what that'll do is it'll cause my airplane to fly back toward the bearing that I actually wanted to be on. Now, how do I know when I arrive back on the bearing that I wanted to be on is because the tail of the needle is going to correct and end up back on the 180 because the tail of the needle actually shows my position. The head of the needle points to the station. The tail of the needle shows my position. Now, as I've said that, I would have to have dialed in the matching heading onto my indicator. So on my heading indicator, I'm flying a 360 and then I turn to a 340. Every time I make a turn, I need to update my movable card behind the scenes here. So some airplanes have something similar to this and it automatically moves with your compass, or excuse me, with your heading indicator. Some of them you have to update and continue to match your actual heading you're flying in order to read what uh, bearing you're on. And then there's another kind that I haven't seen in years and years where it's actually a fixed card and that's a bit of extra work. We won't go into that right now. Okay, so this is basically how your um, ADF works. ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. It points, the needle just simply points at the NDB, non-directional beacon. And that's um, a nav aid on the ground. The instrumentation you're more likely to find in more modern aircraft, particularly a glass cockpit, are RMIs. And how this works is you're on your heading indicator, let's say for example you're flying a heading of 360, you can superimpose two needles on top of your heading indicator to help show your position and bring you very quick situational awareness. And how they typically work is you'll have one needle solid and a second needle that has uh, a double er and then the arrowhead. So what this information is telling us is the single needle may go to VOR number one and the double may go to VOR number two. So if we have a VOR station here and a VOR station here, and let's make this one be VOR number, station number one, and this one be station number two. What the needle's actually showing me is that the single line arrow for VOR number one says that my position is southwest of the station. So perhaps I'm somewhere off the 230. So in relation to station number one, I'm somewhere down here. And then in relation to station number two, it says that the tail of the needle shows my position. It shows that I am southeast of the station. So southeast is going to be in this direction. So therefore, if I'm southwest of the VOR number one needle and I'm southeast of VOR number two needle, my aircraft is right here. And then I see what heading I'm flying. I'm heading in the direction of 360. And it's very quick and easy to see my position. It brings very good situational awareness just by looking at one simple instrument.